Detroit is an American city located on the border with Canada, considered the automotive center in the United States of America. It was in this city that the automotive concept appeared, a car for every home, a car for every family. The Ford Motors Company was founded here by Henry Ford, but the city is known not only for cars. During the Prohibition period, more than 75% of illegal alcoholic beverages were transported through Detroit. Also, the city is uh, the birthplace of the cream soda drink. The most popular recipe for this uh, drink was published in the Michigan Farmer newspaper in 1862. According to data for 2021, 630,000 people live in this city. In recent years, it has been among the 10 most dangerous cities in the country with a high crime rate. And once, uh, Detroit was uh, the fourth most populous city in the United States, right after um, New York, Los Angeles and Chicago. In the mid-50s, life in these places was in full swing. The streets were crowded with people and built up with skyscrapers and private mansions. Almost 2 million people lived here, but later thousands of residents began to leave the city and it began to die. It has become an example of the transformation of a once thriving metropolis into an urban misunderstanding. How did it happen? Detroit from a French word literally means straight. Detroit. It is located on the river of the same name, originates from 1701 when the French colonial administrator and military commander Antoine Lomé de la Mothe de Cadillac and you know the automobile company that was named after him, the Cadillac. So he created the city as a trading post. Until the 19th century, the city was part of Canada and was part of the British Empire. Later, it was transferred to the USA and was just a fenced uh, plot of uh, land. For a couple of centuries, the city managed to flourish as much as it was possible at that time. Detroit was a very well located. Uh, due to its transit value, it managed to become a major industrial center with modern and expensive buildings. Having an office here was considered very prestigious. The so-called golden age of the city fell at the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th centuries. At the same time, many buildings and mansions with luxurious architecture were built. Washington Boulevard, which was illuminated by bright Edison bulbs, became really popular at that time. For such luxury and brightness of the streets, Detroit was called the Paris of the West. At the end of the 19th century, the first cars began to appear, which inspired Ford to create his own car model. Detroit has become an automobile capital thanks to the care of Ford, the Dodge brothers, Durand, Picard and Chrysler. The appearance of auto giants in the city led to a five-fold increase in the population. At that time, half a million people lived in Detroit. In the 20s of the 20th century, more and more cars for personal use began to appear in the city. Thus, Western Paris became one of the first cities in which a network of expressways and interchanges began to be built. At the same time, the public transport system did not develop, but only worsened. At that time, personal cars were actively advertised and public transport was considered a means of transportation for the poor. The active use of um, cars by residents of the city led to the fact that more and more people began to move out of town. In the 50s, the outflow of residents began. Engineers and skilled workers were living. More and more representatives of the middle class also sold their homes and moved to the suburbs. Real estate in these places began to cost less and this continued every day. Since solvent people mostly left the city, Detroit faced financial difficulties. There were only the residents who barely made ends meet, uh, those who lived on welfare and worked at a low rate. Most of them were immigrants, uh, the influx of whom happened during the war. As poverty began to flourish in many urban areas, crime began to flourish along with it. In 
In 1973, the oil crisis came, which severely hit the positions of the big Detroit 3, Chrysler Group, General Motors, and Ford Motor Company. Then more and more competitors began to appear from Japan and European countries. It has become more difficult to hold positions than the crisis of 1979 came and even later the crisis of 2008 and 2009, which almost finished off the local auto industry. Factories began to close and workers continued to leave the city whole houses. The goal of the Auto Center of America, a car for every family, may have been realized, but it led to consequences in the form of an outflow of population. Having a car gave more opportunities and someone stopped seeing the meaning of living in one place in the center of Detroit. By 2013, about a quarter of the population was out of work and a third of the population was below the poverty lane. Many buildings of the city were rapidly emptying, as a result many abandoned buildings appeared. At its peak there were more than 50,000 abandoned buildings in Detroit. Local authorities are still working on the demolition of abandoned buildings. According to them, at the moment there are more than 16,000 abandoned buildings in the city. In the 80s, the local had their own fund burning abandoned houses on Halloween, so 800 buildings could burn in one night. To prevent major fires, the local authorities of the city created the so-called Squad of Angels of the Night, who tried to prevent the burning of houses. In 2013, the city declared itself bankrupt. Detroit cannot repay $18.5 billion in debt to its creditors. Before that, there were attempts to sell abandoned houses, as some of them in 2012 were sold for $500 a piece or even less. But it did not help much. Very few people were interested in buying a house in such a place. According to the Detroit News, more than half of the owners did not pay taxes in 2012, which led to $130 million in damage to the city. What's with the city now? Despite the decline, the headquarters of General Motors is still located in Detroit and the headquarters of Ford Motors and Chrysler in the suburbs. The city center is not very populated, but it is safer here than it was before. $210 million were invested in the city to modernize the lighting system. In 2017, after a long break, trams began to run on Detroit streets again. The Little Caesars Arena was built here, where sports events and concerts can now be held. Now Detroit is famous not only for automobile exhibitions, but also for music festivals. Rich businessmen trying to make money on cheap real estate by investing a lot in the city. Billionaire Daniel Gilbert, owner of the mortgage bank Quicken Loans and native of uh, Detroit, has purchased several abandoned buildings in order to restore them. He also transferred 12,000 of his employees to the city. Following Gilbert, other companies began to provide support. Ford has acquired an abandoned station building where it plans to place a research center. And for the second, the grandson of main Henry Ford, already in the 70s, expressed a desire to revive the city. Then he founded a huge office center, which was called the City Within the City. The center's official name was the Detroit Renaissance Center. That is, the center of the Renaissance of Detroit. Then it did not help the economy much. It uh, remains to be held that the actions of the current authorities, Daniel Gilbert and other businessmen, will help Detroit to revive and even surpass itself. That is all for today. Write in the comments if you believe in the revival of Detroit. Detroit. If it was interesting, smash the like button, don't put an undeserved like, share in the comments what place on earth you would like to go next, write uh, what uh, facts, events, sites you're interested at, it helps me plan uh, trips and shoot videos on the most interesting topics. Uh -huh.